Well, we've learned all sorts of forecasting tools, from qualitative ones to quantitative ones. And now let's sort of bring it all together and use Excel for some of these calculations. We have a, a spreadsheet, which just demands over a variety of days or a variety of time periods and what days and what exact dates they are, not really that material. But what we're going to do is go through a series of questions related to this particular spreadsheet. So the first thing is I have a, a question sheet set out here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the simple moving average uh, for n is equal to 4, so 4 observations, which means our first forecast will be for the fifth period, right? Because we'll take those four simple uh, We'll take those four observations, find their average. That would be the forecast for the next period, which would be period 5. We'll calculate uh, an error, right? And uh, we'll calculate uh, the mean absolute deviation, right? Just to give us some flavor. We'll be calculating a little bit of everybody uh, eventually, okay? So let's find that simple moving average. So we have demand. I'm going to give us some labels, simple moving average. Um, we want to find some errors, so I'm going to go to the absolute value. That's just above my enter key. Uh, ET, an absolute value again. I'm going to center those just so they're nice in the middle. There we go. Let's start. So, uh, as we were discussing, it takes n is equal to 4 for the simple moving average. So, I'm just going to put a little notation there n is equal to 4. And that means I can make the first forecast for the fifth period. Now, that would just be summing up and dividing it by four. So summing up the previous four demands from day one, day two, day three, day four, and dividing by four, which is the same as just a simple average. So I'll just go equals to average. Highlighting the previous four cells. Close the bracket. And push enter. I will copy this all the way down, and I have my series of numbers. Oh, there they all are. Uh, and you'll notice that there's one for period uh, day 60. This is a forecast. Okay, so this is the forecast. So we have 59 days worth of data. Here's our forecast for day 60 based on a simple moving average. We can find errors. Remembering that error is just a demand minus the forecast. So it equals to demand minus whatever the forecast is. And that's it. Okay. Nothing, nothing more complicated than that. Uh, we want the absolute value of those errors. So I'm just going to uh, around that go absolute value is ABS. Okay. You can kind of see it pop up with uh, Excel once I start typing ABS, but you pretty much kind of need to know it's ABS or how it starts, absolute so, kind of thing. And I got to put in brackets, the calculation, okay? And now I'm all set. Push enter, and I'm going to copy this down. Now I'm going to scroll down to the bottom because there's one I don't want. This at the very bottom for day 60, that error calculation is meaningless because there's no, there's no demand for that period. So with no demand, I don't want the error calculation in there. If I left it in there, it's going to make a mess of my uh, mean absolute deviation calculation. So I just get rid of it, and I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. Again, no actual demand for a period, no actual error for that period. Although we do have a forecast, and that is good. So let's find the mean absolute deviation, MAD, MAD for mean absolute deviation. And yes, there's a formula for it. And we've seen the formula. Um, but I want to move away from formulaic calculations, especially in a third year class. We want to sort of be able to understand what's going on. And uh, once we know what's going on, the formula just somewhat just nicely flows from there and, and sort of just happens. So mean absolute deviation. Okay, so we're just thinking of what that means. That's just an average, right? A mean, right? Equals to average. 
of the absolute deviations. Well, that's all those little absolute values of ETs that we just calculated, right? So shift, control, shift, and down. Have all those up. Close the bracket. And it's as easy as that, right? Mean absolute deviation. I found the absolute deviations. Now I just take the average of those absolute deviations. I didn't have to go sweating over uh, uh, formulas, nothing. It just, it's just A lot of this is very intuitive oriented stuff. I mean, mean squared error less intuitive, but um, we, we'll get to there. At, uh, it'll make sense. I'm just going to kind of shorten up that mean absolute deviation calculation just to kind of keep it somewhat neat. So there you go, right? We, we've done that and that's essentially we've nice and quickly and easily done number one. Number two is we're going to calculate a weighted moving average with the weight of 0.5 applied to the most recent observation. Okay, keep that in mind. And let's just put this up a little bit. 0.3 to the second most recent and then 0.1 to the third and 0.1 to the fourth. That order is important in our world. Okay, We'll calculate the MAD and we'll calculate this mean squared error thing. Okay, We have the order for the weights so we just have to make sure that the weights match up with the data. So the most recent observation, so when we look at day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, we see that we go from least recent to the most recent. So the most recent is on sort of the bottom, if you will. So if I think of a four period piece of, of data, day one, day two, day three, day four, okay? Just the four piece, because we have four weights. So each of those weights will match up with an observation or an actual demand. The most recent will be applied to day four, Day three will be the second most recent. Day two would be the third most recent. And day one would be the least recent or the most into the past, right? So we see how that, those are organized. Most recent at the bottom, least recent at the top. So when we start to organize our, our weights for our weighted moving average, so weighted moving average, we think of 0.5 is the most recent, right, is applied to the most recent observation, which puts it at the bottom because the higher number days are towards the, uh, the bottom of the spreadsheet. 0.3 to the second most recent, 0.1 to the other two. Okay, that order is very important, right? Switch that, this order in the data and we'd switch that order in those weights. Okay, so there's nothing magical about this order other than we're matching up with the way the data flows. Some data sets have the most recent data point at the top, it would be in, let's say in row six, and then the least recent uh, data point would be down towards the bottom, you know, around row 64 or so. Uh, and then we'd be flipping those weights around. Okay, so we just have to, be, have to read the question very carefully and look at the way our data was organized. There's, don't want it to be just rote muscle memory uh, without thinking. The thinking part is extremely important. When we have four weights, so we have the four weights and we, we um, can then, we need four observations to make the forecast. The forecast is always for a future period. So if I have four weights, I'm going to need four observations to make the forecast for the fifth period. So weighted moving average again would be starting its first forecast on for day five. Now weighted moving average gets is gives us the opportunity to sort of revisit a an old friend uh, that we got to to know and love, perhaps uh, in your. Finance 113 days, the old sum product. So we go equal to sum product. Because when we think of what a weight is, is we take that weight, we multiply it, let's say 0.5, times by the most recent demand, 
day four. And then we add it, 0.3 times the second most recent demand, and 0.1 times the third most recent, and 0.1 again times the least most recent uh, data point. We are essentially multiplying right, each one of those weights by its respective demand, and then adding them up, the very definition of some product. So we're going to start off with the weights. Now we want to be able to copy this formula down so those weights don't change. I don't want those weights to be relative reference. The weights are the same for every block of four data points. So I'm going to push the F4 key, get those dollar signs all locked up around those weights. And then comma, and then I just highlight the, uh, the demands. Those I want to stay relative referenced. I want those to change. Okay, that's very important. And then I close the bracket. And there you go. I have some product. Pause in case you need to pause me and my talking. And now I push enter. Okay. And then I can copy that down. And I see, hey, look at that. I have a forecast for day 60. Awesome, right? Okay. So let's do a, an error calculation just like we did before. So let's find the E. The errors, E, T, absolute values, center those up. And same process as before, equals to the ABS of the errors. So demand, which is B10, minus the forecast. Remember, the weighted moving average is the forecast. The simple moving average is the forecast. The demand is the demand. Okay, so demand is common to everybody. So it's really, really easy to click on the wrong cell here. Really easy. But it's absolute value, demand minus whatever your forecast is. Close that bracket. Copy this down. Get rid of the last one because it doesn't make any sense because there's no demand for that last period of day 60. We're all set. So, not too bad there. Now let's uh, do a couple of calculations. We'll do the uh, MAD just to do that again. And then we'll do this MSC stuff. Okay. MAD, same as it was before. If uh, we were in a more interactive form, I would make you do this one. But uh, we are where we are. And it's just, again, just the average of those absolute deviations. Mean absolute deviation. Just the average of those absolute deviations. And it's nothing more than that. Easy peasy, right? You can just reduce a couple of decimal spots. So it's not so messy looking, but, you know, there we sit, right? Now, mean squared error. A little bit more interesting there. So let's just pull, a, I'm just going to pull in a, for, a formula sheet here. And we see our formula here for mean squared error. Let's, let's zoom in. Okay, so there's our formula for mean squared error. We take the errors, we square them, sum them up, divide by n. Summing up and divide by n is like an average. So there's, there's two approaches to this particular problem, and it depends on uh, your comfort level. You can go through a, a more uh, longer step-by-step -step process, find the squared errors, and then find the average of those squared errors. That's perfectly fine. Or we can do this in, in one big step. Okay. For this one, we're going to go with it long form just so that we can see how it works. Uh, and then when we go into exponential smoothing, we'll shorten it up a little bit. And I'll show you the shortcut. There's a very nice function in Excel that shortens uh, how messy it, or how much work goes into this. Okay. So first step is we're going to square those errors and then basically find the average of the squared errors, right? Mean squared errors. So find the squared errors and then find the average of those squared errors. Okay, 
Sue. Square of the errors. Okay. Now, luckily, the squared of those errors, we can take the absolute deviation and just square those. Okay. So it equals to this squared. All right? Nothing. Nothing more than that. Again, all little steps, right? We're just looking at a series of, of little steps. So, yeah, huge number. Yeah, big, scary, nasty-looking number. Get that part. Okay. And then we just copy that down. Okay, so it's all copied down. I double-check. Get rid of the zero here because it's going to make a mess of us. We don't have any demand, so no errors there. We don't know if our forecast is good or bad. That's for the future to decide. Move this MSC over here. Okay, so now we find the average of that those squared errors. Average bracket. Highlight everybody. Close that bracket. And nothing more than a simple average. And ba boom, bada bang. And there we are. Mean squared error, 14,562.4. Mean absolute deviation, hey, I, you know, whatever unit demand is in, mean absolute deviation is in that same uh, unit. So mean absolute deviation is a little bit more intuitive to explain. If, let's say, demand was in units, mean absolute deviation would also be in units. Mean squared error would not be. Uh, so it's a, it, mean squared error is a little bit harder to say, hey, is this a big number? Is this a small number to relate to it? Although it can be very, very convenient when we use solver. So there we go. We've now wrapped up weighted moving average. We found some errors. We've calculated MAD. We've calculated MSC. Now into, into the next clip, we'll go into uh, exponential smoothing models.